Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I die, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Curtis Edwards. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss, and may God grant us peace peace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and for all who are here to celebrate Kurt's life. Many hearts are sad today, but we can also smile from all the many memories we have of Kurt. Help us to acknowledge that even though we are experiencing loss, we can also celebrate our faith and the lessons Kurt learned right here in this church through his baptism and confirmation. Thank you for the gift of Kurt's active full life on this earth for close to 64 years. Amen. You may be seated. Curtis Frederick Edwards, Kurt, age 63, died peacefully November 28, 2021, shortly after being diagnosed with late-stage pancreatic cancer. Kurt was born December 17, 1957, to Robert and Rosemary Edwards. He was raised in a sports-loving family in Dodgeville with his three brothers, Ed, Terry, and Doug. The boys played hard at whatever sport was in season, and it was not unusual to find Kurt chipping ice off the backyard basketball court in January so he could work on his shot. Another favorite sport was wiffle ball played in the family driveway for hours. Kurt excelled in basketball and baseball in high school and enjoyed playing Babe Ruth and Legion uh, baseball in summers. As an adult, he spent many years as the catcher for the Dodgeville home talent baseball team, once hitting three home runs in one game. He was also an avid bowler, enjoying many league nights at Dodger Bowl Lanes. Kurt made regular trips to the casino where he understood more than most the intricacies of the craps table. He was an avid fan of both the Packers and the Brewers. And after graduating from Dodgeville High School, Kurt earned a business degree from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. He then became a proud employee of Hennessy Implement in Dodgeville working full-time for 39 years. He continued working there part-time in retirement. Kurt married Kathy Hennessy in 1981. The couple later parted but remained good friends. In 1996, Kurt met Nancy Bonjour, and the couple enjoyed 16 years together until Nancy's death from bone cancer in 2012. Some of Kurt's happiest times were shared with Nancy and her family. Many summer weekends were devoted to camping and fishing with Nancy's daughter and son-in-law, Patty and Dale Emerson, and grandchildren, Courtney and Kyle. In recent years, Kurt had many good times with his special friend, Kathy Copenhorn. Kurt enjoyed living life to the fullest and would want us all to do the same. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 23. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, if it were not so. Would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be.
we enter into this time for sharing, I will be reading some memories and stories that were um, submitted about Curtis, and then we'll open it up to anybody gathered here who would like to come forward and share um, a memory or a story about um, Kurt. You can do that as well. So I, I wanted to start by sharing um, some memories of Kurt that um, his brother Terry submitted. Kurt grew up in a loving family of sports nuts. Because everyone, including mom, loved sports, it kept us together. Or as dad often said, it kept the boys off the streets. Kurt excelled at sports and would have been even better had he not fallen out of a tree when he was in second grade and broke his femur. The hospital was one block from our house and dad and the neighbor carried Kurt over to the hospital on an ironing board. He was in traction for six weeks. Kurt was the ultimate Packer fan. Unbelievably, when we were kids, he was the only Packer fan in the family. The rest of us have now seen the light. But in the 60s, Kurt was relegated to the basement to watch the Packers on a black and white TV. To add insult to injury, Dad would order Kurt to climb up on the roof of our house and adjust the antenna so he could watch the Bears games from a station in Rockford. We played more home talent baseball games than I could count. One night I was pitching, Kurt was catching, and the bases were loaded with nobody out. A one hopper came back to me, I threw to Kurt for the force out at home. Kurt threw to first for the force out there, our first baseman then threw home, and Kurt put the tag on the runner who had been on second and was trying to score. As the dust was settling and we were all realizing we had just pulled off a triple play, Kurt turned to the opposing bench and forcefully said, take a snap of that, <laughs> and then walked off the field like we did it every day. <laughs> Kurt wore his emotions on his sleeve. You always knew where he stood. And it wasn't hard to tell when Kurt disagreed with you because he had a world-class eye roll. <laughs> Kurt had a hard outer shell but a soft heart. I ran into an old neighbor once who said, how is your brother doing? I said, Curtis? And he said, yeah, that hard-boiled one. <laughs> On the other side of that, Kurt was extremely kind to his nieces and nephews and was proud to be a godparent to Matthew and Allie. So many of his friends have said, he's like a brother to me. Kurt handled his final diagnosis with dignity and strength. He thanked his family continually and expressed his love for family and friends in his final days. I love you, Kurt. Rest in peace. I share this memory from um, Patty Emerson. I have many good and bad memories of our times together. Let me just say Kurt would be so disappointed if I didn't share a memory about our family. Kurt, my mom, and my family shared many trips together and made many memories, but the one that stands out the most was a trip to Mexico. My mom and I wanted to go shopping at the market downtown, so we needed to take the bus. Kurt kept telling us that we should wait a while because the, cursed, the workers would be on the bus trying to get home. Well, if you know my mom and I, um, we weren't going to wait. We got on the bus and all was fine, but by the time we got to the market, there must have been 250 people on the bus. People couldn't move. They were up against the windshield. It was so packed. Of course, we were the only six Americans on that bus, and none of us spoke Spanish. When we got off that bus, boy, oh boy, did we get an earful from Kurt. <laughs> He was so worried someone was going to pickpocket him. 
There were so many words of choice from him, his face was probably the reddest I had ever seen it. He was mad. Even though he was mad, later we laughed about it, and he said it was something he would never forget. I would like to thank Kurt for coming to our kids' games, graduations, birthday parties, going away party, a wedding, and loving Courtney and Kyle unconditionally. We will all miss him. And this comes from Kyle Anderson. I was lucky enough to have lots of memories with Kurt growing up. Kurt was the first person to bring out my love for fishing. One of my earliest memories is when he would drive to go fishing in his black Ford Ranger with teal stripes, listening to 1310 AM radio station or KISS. When Kurt Foss first bought his boat, we forgot to put the plug in and almost sunk the boat. Every time after that, we always asked each other if the plug was in because we did not want to make the same mistake. Kurt always had two fishing poles that he was very proud of, the Green Bay Packer pole and the Wolf Faithful. In the, very, in the special voice he always uses, he would say, look at the bend of that rod. Almost every weekend in the summer, Mom, Dad, Courtney, Grandma, and Kurt would go camping in the Dells. Every Saturday morning, Kurt would knock on the window of our camper and ask if I would want to go fishing. I would have to sneak out of the window so I didn't wake anybody up. We decided to change our fishing tactics one evening, and Kurt thought it would be a good idea to use um, a piece of wood as an anchor. While we were up in the Dells, we would go mini-golfing and go on a water log ride. Kurt and I would sneak away to go to the batting cages, and if, it, if we weren't camping, we would hang out in the basement and listen to his record player really loud, which would make Grandma mad. We would always go in the hot tub in the winter. I remember running through the snow and then jumping back into the hot tub. We always went there when Dodgeville had their garage sale. Kurt and I would look at the paper and read all the fishing ads. These are just some of the memories that I have with Kurt, some that I will cherish forever. He's an incredibly special person to me. You will be missed. I love you, Kurt. Is there anybody that would want to um, come forward and share a memory, all right? Hi, everyone. I am Courtney Anderson. Um, I just wanted to share a few memories that I had. Um, Kurt has been a part of my life since I was just a teeny tiny baby, so I've known him my whole life. Um, as you know, our family infamous story is our story from Mexico, and I'm sure me being a small child and my brother being even younger, we heard a lot of words that we probably shouldn't have heard that day, but oh well, that's just Kurt and what we got used to. Um, another story about Kurt, um, we would always go sledding at the high school hill here in Dodgeville when we got a lot of snow, and it was always, it was steep, very steep, so we would always try to find the best sled to use, because we wanted to go fast, because why go slow down a steep hill? Um, I'm pretty sure we went through a lot of tubes, but one weekend uh, we had an inflatable tube and we walked away with a broken sled and I fractured or severely bruised my thumb. But we still had fun and that's all that matters. Um, and then anybody remember the dog tracks in Dubuque? Because I spent a lot of my time there growing up on the weekends. Um, me being just a young kid, I would love to go and bet on what dog would win the race, so I started my gambling very early on. Um, one instance going to Dubuque, I remember Kurt asked me if I knew how to spell Dubuque. I'm like, no, I'm just a little kid. And he taught me there's a U after every uh, letter. And I can still hear it in my head and I still spell it this way, D-U-B-U-Q-U-E. So every time I go over that bridge, going through my head and I know how to spell it thanks to Kurt. Um, 
And over the last couple of years, I've actually inherited his love for craps. When growing up, I always was like, oh, I don't understand craps at all. Now, I understand. It's a very fun game to play. And you can bet next time I'm at the casino, I will be playing a game for him, and hopefully he gives me some good luck. So, Kurt, you will be missed, and I hope you and Grandma are camping away up there. Hi, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Bruce Nelson. Um, Kurt was a really good friend of mine growing up. I like to share a few stories of our experiences together. We started being friends through our love of baseball and other sports. Baseball was a sport that we spent most of our time playing together. We started out watching older brothers play ball at games. We then played backyard baseball, wiffle ball, and rubber ball before moving on to Babe Ruth High School and Legion Baseball. Kurt was a really good catcher and hitter. All of the Edwards brothers, Ed, Terry, Kurt, and Doug, played catcher, must have been something in the genes, and they all could really hit. My brother Neil was a really good pitcher. Neil told me that he could never get Kurt out. One of the games me and Kurt played that was a lot of fun and helped improve our hitting was wiffle ball. We had different wiffle ball stadiums. We had um, Edwards Garden, um, Nelson Stadium, <laughs> Roberts Park, um, and, and so there's a wall house. We would play in the Edwards driveway quite a bit. You could throw a wiffle ball really hard and make it move a lot. So hitting it wasn't easy. After playing a lot of wiffle ball, we, we became pretty skilled at hitting. Kurt became really skilled. Most of the time that Kurt hit, he was batting third or fourth in the batting lineup, which is where they always put the best power hitters. Besides playing a lot of baseball, we often played football. John Zawald and Jeff Riley, we called them Zeke and Riles, were, were two of our friends that we often would match up against and play wiffle ball and football. Sometimes we played two-hand touch in John's backyard. All of us were very competitive and it was kind of a rough brand of two-hand touch. <laughs> Kurt had hurt his knee in the summer but still wanted to play despite his camping leg. He had to play quarterback and I played receiver as Kurt could only pass as he couldn't run because of his knee. It was a very close, intense game, as they always were, and time was running out. John and Jeff knew Kurt couldn't run, so they would double team me going out for passes. Near the end of the game, I went out for a long pass. Kurt didn't think he could complete it, so he decides to run basically on one leg. So he's hopping down the field like this. And Jeff and John see him, and they take off after him. He made about 15, years, excuse me, 15 yards before they pushed him hard out of the bounds, sent Kurt sprawling, bad leg and all. Kurt got up, pleased with himself, as he had made a great play. He would do whatever it took to win. On the next play, Kurt threw me a pass between John and Jeff. I caught for a touchdown and we won the game. Me and Kurt were so psyched. <laughs> Besides sports, Kurt and I were also interested in girls. Our first date with girls was a double date. We asked two girls that we liked to go to a movie at the Dodge Theater. Their names were Mary Heimel and Chris Cryer. This was a big deal for us, and we wanted to look our best. <laughs> I decided to wear what I thought was my best outfit. White painter pants with a cool red shirt. 
When I got to the theater and met Kurt, we noticed we were wearing the same outfit. <laughs> we both gave each other the thumbs up. Because <laughs> we knew we looked good. When the girls came, they kind of giggled when they saw us. We figured they really liked us. And we had a real good time. I kind of forgot about this state until a couple of months ago. My brother Neil's wife, Kari, Kari, told me that her high school friend, Mary, had told her about this state. The part she remembered was that we were both wearing white painter pants and a red shirt. She and her friend, Chris, really got a kick out of us wearing the same outfit. I guess me and Kurt weren't the lady killers that we thought we were. After high school, we went our separate ways. I didn't see Kurt for many years. We finally got together at Terry and Penny's son's, Nathan's wedding. It was here that Kurt told a story to a group of us that I had forgotten about. I'm gonna tell you the story as Kurt told it to us. After Kurt told it, I remembered it well. I can't tell it as good as Kurt can, but I'm gonna give it a shot. It was my senior year and Kurt's sophomore year. Dodgeville had hired a new football coach named Miles Strasser. Coach Strasser was six feet, four inches tall, weighed about 240 pounds, and there wasn't an ounce of fat on him. He had played professional football in Canada and he had a big booming voice. The last thing any player wanted to do was get on his bad side or get him mad. I was an end on the scout team and Kurt was a quarterback. I was trying to prove myself to be a good player so coach would consider making me a starter. We were running plays against a first team defense. Coach was trying to build up the defense's confidence. He was yelling out, it is impossible to complete a pass against this defense. You will not be able to complete a pass because this defense is just too good. He then told us the scout offense, get in the huddle and run a play. We pretty much had one play, pass play in the offense at that time. I was to run a post pattern, go straight and slant over the middle. So the defense knew what we were gonna run. Kurt was to pass it to me. I ran the pattern and Kurt threw a perfect strike. He could always throw. One defender was just to my left and one was just to the right of me, trying to knock away the ball. As soon as I caught it, they ran into each other, knocked each other flat on the ground. I took off running as fast as I could for a touchdown. Kurt said that Coach Strasser was turning red and was blowing his whistle as loud as he could, trying to get me to stop. Stop. That's how Kurt said it. I told him it wasn't as good. But. Anyway, I was focused on getting a touchdown and I didn't hear it, so I just kept running. And finally I came back. Kurt thought Coach Strasser was ready to kill me because I wouldn't stop while he was blowing that whistle. Coach never said a word to me about that play. Next week, I was in the starting lineup. Kurt's perfect pass certainly helped my cause. Thanks again, Kurt. And now a poem for Curtis. The year was 1957, and after having two boys, our mom was hoping for a child who could wear a skirt. Instead, he got a little terror named Kurt. <laughs> if Kurt were talking here today, he'd tell us about the Packers, Brewers, and Badgers playing well. He held court on their progress with many texts from his cell. Kurt would tell you how he and his brothers could do no wrong, and at age 63, how he still loved a 
Ted Nugent song. He'd tell us that baseball was his favorite sport to play and his favorite team to beat, no doubt, was Ridgeway. In one game, like Reggie Jackson, he hit three home runs by chance. And after the third, Kurt crossed home plate doing the Pee Wee Herman dance. <laughs> Kurt looked good in the baseball gear he had bought, him, and he always reminded his teammates that the other team was rotten. <laughs> Kurt liked to drive his Ford truck through the main drag and sat proud. It was like he was in a parade, and he would wave to the crowd. If Kurt were in charge today, he'd assemble machinery one more time at the Hennessy Implement, where he enjoyed working and 39 years were spent. He loved bowling and was always searching for that 300 game. He came close, but just couldn't get through that darn 10. When he was eight, Kurt fell from a tree, and Terry said, get up, you wimp. <laughs> However, the leg was badly broken, and Terry felt sheepish, especially when Kurt had a limp. Kurt was not afraid to speak his mind, but he was also a softy with a big heart, and could be so very kind. Kurt will be missed by his family and friends. He had a full life and experienced its joys. We'll never forget you, Kurt. We're so proud you were one of the Edwards boys. With love from his brothers, Eddie Boy, Terrence, and Boog. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. There are over 350 times in the Bible in which it is written, or there is some variation of, do not be afraid. And I think this repetition is critical because we need that reminder especially when it comes to the more challenging, more difficult, more tragic aspects of life. When things seem to be going well and we seem to have everything under control, God's presence seems clear and there's no reason to be afraid or troubled, but there are times when it feels right and appropriate to be afraid, when it seems right and appropriate to be troubled, when we might wonder where God is in the midst of our struggle. When we face the reality of our own mortality, or when we face the reality of the death of someone that we care about, someone we love, those feelings of fear and trouble are only natural. And it's then that we need that reminder that God is present with us at all times, especially in those times when it is hard, when it is hard to find God in the midst of it all. In our denominational tradition as United Methodists, we call funeral services celebrations of And that language may seem strange, especially with the reality that we come into this space grieving, experience, experiencing sadness, coming with a sense of loss as we mourn the death of Curtis. We acknowledge that grief today. And Psalm 23 reminds us of God's presence at all times. We are reminded that God is with us when we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. 
This psalm is attributed to King David, and he describes God as a shepherd. Kings were seen as shepherds of their people, and David, before he was anointed to be a king, was a shepherd. He knew what it meant to be a shepherd. They watched over their sheep and did whatever they could to protect them, even if it meant having to use their staff to ward off wolves and other predators. Shepherds led their sheep to grassy fields, to eat, to clear waters, to drink. So David writes that the Lord is our shepherd. God is the ultimate shepherd. We're reminded that even though when we feel our lowest, when we're really struggling, we're reminded that God is there for us and with us that we need only reach out to him and seek his presence with us. To think of this time together as a celebration of Kurt's life, I really want us to look at that in two ways. First, we take time to celebrate who Curtis was. My goodness, have we done that today? We have heard wonderful stories and memories from so many. We heard a beautiful poem. And in sharing all of this, we remember the difference that Kurt made to so many of us gathered here, the role that he played as son, brother, significant other, uncle, friend, neighbor. We remember how he made us better people, strengthened us in our difficult times. And throughout this day, as we continue to share those stories and those memories and amidst the, all of the emotions that come with it, we continue that celebration of Curtis's life. But secondly, we also celebrate the new life that those who believe in Jesus inherit upon their death. In death, they do not have to worry about it truly being the end. The reading that you heard from the Gospel of John, these first three verses from the 14th chapter are very They're but a small part of a much larger message that Jesus is sharing with his disciples. And these disciples have been following Jesus for three years. They were at the center of his teachings, his declarations, all of his parables. And despite all of this training, all of this experience, the disciples were not perfect people. They misinterpreted his parables. They wanted to condemn people that Jesus said they were to love and care for. And here the disciples are with Jesus in the upper room, sharing with them the Last Supper, and he offers them some final teachings. And, and even in his teachings, the disciples are concerned because Jesus is using language in which he says, hey, there's going to come a time when I will no longer be with you. And his disciples don't like the sound of that. And Jesus could sense their concern. And that's why, that's where these three verses come in. That's why Jesus says to them, do not be afraid. He tells them that in his father's house, there are many dwelling places. That, that there's a place that is set aside for them. And that there will come a time when Jesus will come and take them to be with him. And later in this chapter, he reiterates to them, don't be troubled, don't be afraid. To, to be confident that though there will come a time when he will no longer be with them, the Holy Spirit will be the abiding presence of God with them forever. He wants them to know that they can live in confidence that because of his death and resurrection, all who believe in him will have eternal life and that they can rely on this message and have assurance if they believe. In talking with Terry, he shared that um, the song Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone is a reminder that none of us are perfect. Amen to that. The disciples were not perfect. None of us are perfect. The only 
one who was perfect was Jesus. And it was Jesus who offered himself as the perfect sacrifice for our sin. And as Terry shared with me, we don't have to be perfect because Jesus did the heavy lifting. Amen to that as well. Imperfect though we may be, we live our lives in a way that as much as possible reflects God's love for us as we seek to love God and love others. Kurt was blessed to grow up in a loving family, has a special connection to this church. He was baptized here, attended Sunday school here, vacation Bible school here. His confirmation class has a special connection to the sanctuary because his class, when they were all eighth graders, was the first class to have confirmation in this new church building. We've heard some beautiful testimonies by so many about how Kurt lived his life passionately and fully and sought to help others and bless the lives of the many people that he came to know and care about. And as we now commend Curtis into the hands of God, we do so celebrating the life he lived and celebrating the new life that he now has in Jesus Christ. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us on this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To those who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. And keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways we trust you. And to you with your church on earth and in heaven we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours as you first gave Curtis to us. We give Curtis back to you. Receive him into the arms of your mercy. Raise him up with all of your people and receive us also and us into a new life. Help us to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. And now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Kurt. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints of light. And let us now pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
After the graveside burial service, you are all invited to uh, Dino's across the street from our church here uh, for lunch and refreshments that are provided by the family. And now I would ask if you could please stand. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Hear now this reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-9. through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you suffer trial, so that the genuineness of your faith may prove itself worthy at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, yet you love him. Do not now see him, you believe in him, and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the harvest of your faith, you reap the salvation of your souls. Almighty God, into your hands we commend your son, Curtis Edwards. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Again, let us pray. It's able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish 
in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever.